Well, I have been involved with the platform, the Societal Impact of Pain, for the last two years in the Parliament, and I've hosted a number of conferences, especially where the European Pain Alliance was set up. I have. I suppose particular interest in people's health. My committee is Employment and Social Affairs. One part of our remit is health and safety at work. And as, as one of those, the 9% of the working population in the EU that, that suffers, I can't say I suffer from chronic pain, but intermittent pain at different times in my life. I, I have sympathy with those people. And if there's anything useful that I can do here by bringing these organisations together, by bringing this to the attention of European policymakers, then I am more than happy to do it. I think for a start, for a lot of, when I said to somebody today I was coming down to chair a conference on pain, the reaction was, on what? And I said, on pain, P-A-I-N. And they were surprised. They thought, you know, what's the relevance of that? And I think one of the issues that people who suffer from chronic pain face is that most people don't understand it have no concept of what it's about because if most people suffer a pain that's a warning sign their body is saying to them hold on stop there's something wrong here so they see pain as a protective measure but sometimes pain if you like becomes chronic and sometimes it's not directly attributable to a disease for example cancer sufferers many 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 of them suffer pain even after their treatment is finished we all know stories of people who've lost a limb but yet they suffer pain and that phantom limb and I think the the notion out there among I'd say a fairly large proportion of the population is, it's all in your mind. If you thought differently about it, it would be different. But that's not true. And I was so pleased here today, Dr. Conroy, who's a specialist from Ireland, has said that we are very close in Ireland to being the first European country to look at pain as a disease in its own right, rather than as a symptom. And I think if we get to that point, then we can offer some hope to that 9% of the working population of the EU. If Ireland does this, and I hope it does, then if other countries were to follow suit, what would that mean? That would mean that the Department of Health would have to appoint more pain specialists. It would become a specialism in, the, in its own right. And people who have chronic pain then could be treated for the disease they have and not for a myriad of other things. At European level, we heard today from a representative from the Agency for Health and Safety at Work and the work that they are doing in this area, mainly with businesses trying to ensure that uh, the, the, the work area, etc., is, you know, it's adapted for, for people who have uh, maybe chronic pain, but also that the risks particularly the risks for health and safety, are eliminated in so far as we can. So if you at national level have, let's say, more pain specialists or people who are dedicated to the disease of pain, and at European level you have um, initiatives to ensure that the, the workplaces are safer for workers, uh, then I think if you bring all of those things together, you have sort of an overall picture. And I think we can work at many different levels. I have to say, I am particularly disappointed, I am very disappointed, that it looks as if the European Commission will not come forward with their proposed directive on musculoskeletal disorders. We heard the agency say today that the two most significant causes for people being off work in the EU are one, stress or psych psychosocial um, problems, and the second one was musculoskeletal disorders. But I, I know, though I cannot say it publicly, I am saying it but I'm not saying who, that there has been very strong lobbying in the Commission by some member states against the um, publication of this draft directive on musculoskeletal diseases and it looks as if they may well have been successful. I think that is a real pity. Member states do not see perhaps this as the, the remit of the EU. They feel that it's going beyond the competence of the European Union, that health and all of those issues should be a member state competence. But we have already heard from the agency that this is one of the two most important issues for, for people who, who are off work or who lose time at work. Uh, so from that perspective, it does come under the remit of the EU. I think I cannot speak for those member states. I can only tell you what my opinion is and I think they believe this might impose burdens on them and that they don't want 
this dealt with at a European level, they want to deal with it themselves. And, and we know that that is not always the best way forward, that we can, if we deal with something at a European level, that then it has an impact for 500 million citizens. Um, and I, I just believe um, strong pressure has been brought to bear on the Commission, and despite the work being done on this, it, it, it will never, I believe, at least not in the near future, reach the Parliament. And I think that's a real disappointment, uh, and especially for all of those um, tens of millions of people across the EU who suffer from musculoskeletal diseases.